What's up everyone, this is White Pointer, bringing you a retrospective video where I look at an old game and see how it fares by today's standards. In this one, I'll be taking a look at a game that was a complete reboot and reimagining of a classic, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time. Developed by Ubisoft, under the watchful eye of the creator of the original Prince of Persia, Jordan Mechner, it was originally released in 2003 on pretty much every platform you could think of. GameCube, Xbox, PlayStation 2, Windows PC, there was even a version released on the Game Boy Advance, though we won't be looking at that version in this video. This was the first game in the acclaimed Sands of Time trilogy, and is often considered by many to be the best game in the series. It took the gaming world by storm back in 2003, with its innovative gameplay and unique storytelling, but how does it stack up in 2019? Let's get right to it and find out! Prince of Persia The Sands of Time isn't just a retelling of the original game's plot, in fact, it's completely new. In Sands of Time, the story is set in 9th century Persia, and you play as a young unnamed prince who recovers a mysterious dagger while his father and the rest of his army are raiding a Maharaja city, brought on by the king's conniving vizier who hides behind ulterior motives. They take a large hourglass containing the Sands of Time and present it to the Sultan of the city of Azad, and the vizier tricks the prince into using the dagger to release the sands and transform the inhabitants into sand monsters. Only three escape this fate, the Vizier, the Prince, and the Maharaja's daughter Farah, the last of which becomes the Prince's ally as he seeks to undo the damage he unwittingly caused. The way the story is told is quite unique in the fact that the Prince is narrating it as a series of events that happened to him in the past and recounting his actions. As a result, he frequently stops for short monologues to speak about the events that just happened, or to reinforce that what he's saying is indeed 100% true, as if his audience are not totally believing his words. But perhaps the most clever application of this is when the prince dies in the game, and you're presented with the game over screen, as he'll amusingly say something like, No, 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 that didn't happen, as if he had a momentary lapse in memory. No, 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 that didn't happen. May I start again? The theme of time stays constant throughout the whole game, and it all comes full circle and makes sense right at the end. It's a rare method of telling story in video games, but it works remarkably well in the sands of time. The original Prince of Persia saw you jumping, climbing, avoiding traps, and fighting bad guys as you made your way to the exit of each area. This core gameplay is retained in the sands of time, but wow, what an upgrade! The prince is far more acrobatic here than he'd ever been, and the transition to 3D opened up a ton of new options. The prince can now run a short distance up or across walls. He can vault from one wall to another. He can sidle across narrow ledges. He can climb pillars and trees and jump between them. He can swing across horizontal bars, tree branches or flagpoles. He can move blocks turn cranks, pull levers, and more. We've seen this type of thing in quite a few games since then, but what's important to acknowledge here is that the Sands of Time was the pioneer of a lot of this stuff. When you look at it in that context, it's a pretty remarkable achievement. In a terrific nod to the original game, the way some traps are avoided is almost the same. There were many places in the original game where spikes would shoot out of the floor if you walked across the area too fast, so you needed to take it slow and the exact same mechanic is replicated in the Sands of Time, which is really cool. The path through each specific area is pretty linear for the most part. Generally, there's only really one way you can go, but working out how to use the various moves available and how to interact with the environment to do so is the rewarding part. And because, like the original game, the prince takes fall damage or even dies outright if he falls too far, you need to work out how to get down safely, almost as often as you need to work out how to climb to the top of something. There are also, albeit rarely, some actual puzzles to solve along the way as well. And while the path through each area is linear, there are hidden areas you can explore that usually reward you with something like an increased life bar should you find them. Replenishing health is as simple as finding some water to drink, which is generally not difficult to find. Pharaoh joins you partway through the adventure and can help with some puzzles, and generally fires shots with her arrows from a distance, though it doesn't seem to make a heck of a lot of difference to enemy fights. Perhaps the most notable change though, and the mechanic this game, and indeed the whole series is best known for, is the ability to rewind time. 
Should you make a mistake in your platforming or combat that causes the prince to die, you have a short window where you can hold a button to rewind time to before you messed up so you can try again. The number of times you can do this is limited to how many sand techs you currently carry though, but there are plenty of opportunities to refill them, either with small sand fountains or by finishing off enemies by stabbing them with a the dagger. As you progress the game, the prince also acquires some other time related powers, including being able to slow down time in order to get through traps easier, and to slow down all the enemies on the screen, allowing you to quickly dispatch them. Speaking of enemies, the game also has a focus on combat, and when the prince encounters enemies, the game enters a kind of combat mode, where the prince automatically pulls his sword and enters fighting stance. He can use his athletic ability to a degree when fighting, including being able to vault over enemies or off walls. Enemies won't actually die though unless you finish them off with the dagger, so most of the time you're looking for ways to knock them down to give you an opening to do so. In 1989, the world was introduced to a little game on the Apple II called Prince of Persia. Created by Jordan Mechner, the game used rotoscoping, that is, taking a source material and tracing over it, to create realistic animations, and followed the story of a prince's efforts to save a princess from an evil Jafar. The gameplay style spawned an entire subgenre of 2D platformers, seen most prominently in games such as Flashback and Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. The game was critically acclaimed and spawned two sequels in 1993 and 1999. Prince of Persia was also notably very difficult and has been remade, remastered and ported countless times over the years. Ubisoft then picked up the IP and under the direction of Jordan Mechner got to work on a complete reboot of the series in 2001. The Sense of Time uses a modified version of Ubisoft's Jade Engine, which was originally created for the game Beyond Good and Evil. While it did hit some hurdles during development, including scrapping an entire story concept and not having a clear artistic direction until quite late, the results are still nonetheless to be commended. It's easy to see the attention to detail as you play. Clothes and hair move around about as lifelike as was possible at the time. The prince's clothes gradually get more torn as the game progresses. Bars realistically bend slightly when the prince swings on them. Tapestries and curtains flick around when the prince brushes past them. Torches hanging from the ceiling and tree branches sway gently when there's a breeze. Water authentically drips from the prince's hands as he scoops it into his mouth. On a technical level, a lot of it is very impressive. The soundtrack was composed by Stuart Chatwood from Canadian rock band The Tea Party and is very well done. It fits the world the game creates perfectly, having a distinct subcontinental vibe to it. The music kicks up a gear and receives some rock elements to it during battles as well to get the adrenaline going. The sound effects are a bit hit and miss, with much of it being pretty good, but some of it also being a bit misplaced. For example, it's a bit hard to hear some of the dialogue between the Prince and Farrah at times unless you're standing at point blank range. Where are we? This was the Sultan's Zoo. As good as the gameplay is, there are some weird issues you may come across as the physics seem to temporarily wig out occasionally and send you in an unintended direction, possibly to your death. The camera is also frustrating at the best of times, it can spin around quickly or end up in a bad position that makes it more difficult to navigate or fight. It's not game breaking, but if you're used to more modern camera controls, it does get a bit jarring. As mentioned, some of the sound effects, particularly of the character dialogue, are difficult to hear properly at times too. The biggest criticism though in my book comes from the combat. Sequences where you battle many enemies at once are frequent, and the prince doesn't have a large area of moves to call upon in the sense of time. He does get more in the sequels though. Combat essentially boils down to knocking an enemy down somehow, and then driving the dagger into them. In most places of the game, enemies will seemingly endlessly spawn, and just when you think it's over, more will spawn in, and this can keep going and going for some time until they finally stop and the prince puts his sword away. It feels pretty clunky at the best of times, especially when you want to drive a dagger into a knockdown enemy, only for the prince to auto-target another one, and stab them with it instead to unintentionally use one of his slowdown abilities. 
There's also times where you may be trapped in inescapable combos when multiple enemies come at you at once and just keep hitting you when you're on the ground. I've definitely played games with worse combat than this, but it really sticks out in an otherwise well polished experience. The game also isn't particularly long, and you'd probably knock it out in 8-10 to 10 hours, although this can be seen as a good thing as it doesn't overstay its welcome and leaves you wanting more. Prince of Persia The Sands of Time is not only considered one of the best reboots ever made, but one of the greatest video games ever made period. Almost everything the game does, with the notable exception of the combat, is just executed to perfection. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the reboot spawned two sequels and a prequel, all of which tweaked and added abilities and were well received on their own, but never matched the charm of the sands of time. Oh yeah, and an actually decent movie, as far as video game movies go anyway, was also based off it and shared the same name. Prince of Persia received a second reboot in 2008, with a game that shared the same title as the original, and borrowed some platforming elements from the sense of time continuity, but was also otherwise completely new. This was also well received, but didn't match what the sense of time achieved. So is it worth playing in 2019? Definitely, yes. It's actually aged pretty well, all things considered. The game still looks good and controls well for the most part, though you may find yourself using the rewind mechanic more often to fix a misinput rather than a genuine mistake. The combat does bring the overall experience down a bit, but you should absolutely still put it in your list of games to play before you die if you somehow missed it. You could say it's... stood the test of time. Have you played Prince of Persia The Sands of Time yourself? Do you agree with my assessments? I'd love to hear your opinions. Drop me some comments below and give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with my content. Thanks for watching! I know where I am. This gate leads to the baths. Do you think you could find your way there? Of course. Finding my way to the baths from here should be easy. Good. I'll meet you there. I'll just ask the first sand creature I run into. Could you direct me to the baths, please? Well, thank you. Don't mention it. I used to be a bath attendant back when I was alive. I'll meet you at the baths. She orders me around as if I were a servant. It's my own fault. With women, you need to show them you're in charge right from the start, or they'll walk all over you. I've been too indulgent. Probably because I felt sorry for her. Well, it stops now. From now on, she'll have to toe the line. That is, assuming I can find her.